Well, good Friday morning. I'm Marlon Bowling with you, your tour guide to the Ag Commodities. So glad you could join us today. And it's been kind of a brutal week in the grain trade. If you're a producer out there, it's like, when is the fall going to stop? It's been a, a nasty about three days worth of trading. Now, overnight, we did have a bit of a rebound. Let's take a look at what the markets did. We'll take a look at our quotes provided by Bar Chart here. And here we go. On the corn, we did finish up this morning with July corn three cents higher at 5.58 and a quarter. December corn seven higher. Look at that, 5.07 and three quarters this morning. Well, on soybeans, can they pull a rabbit out of a hat? Uh, they were higher. We had July up eight at 13.41 and a quarter. And November new crop soybeans at 12.03 and a quarter would be 16 and a quarter higher this morning. Well, how about that? They climbed back above that $12 benchmark. Now, the true test is wheat. Look at this, Chicago July seven higher at 6.18 and three quarters. It does have a pulse. How about Kansas City wheat? That's the one that has really been getting hammered this week. And July KC wheat was seven and a half cents higher this morning at 864 and a half. So they take out 70, uh, yeah, 70 plus cents, I believe, and give back seven. Sound like a fair trade to you? If you look at Minneapolis wheat, you have the July spring wheat nine cents higher overnight at 837 and a half. And we'll throw in the cotton market here too, no extra charge. You have July 25 points higher at 86.91, December up 14 points. Well, we have Brian Hoops on the line with us and uh, he of course is with Midwest Market Solutions. He is in Springfield, Missouri. Okay, so the wheat tour wrapped up uh, yesterday and Tammy kind of revealed those numbers earlier, but uh, we can look at them again. They ended up with an overall average for the entire tour of uh, 30 bushels per acre in Kansas. That's not great, Brian. Uh, in fact, that uh, <laughs> would equate to quite a bit lower production than what USDA had projected, and everybody thought that was pretty low. So, Marlon, so the, the USDA actually said a yield of 29 bushels per acre. So their yield is actually uh, above the USDA number, but overall total production is well below it because they found much higher abandonment rates. And I believe that to be the case, especially out in western parts of Kansas, maybe in, the, in that northwest section as well. Um, this would be, as far as production numbers that they that they released the lowest in 66 years and uh, well below what the USDA says when you factor in less harvested acres. And we've certainly heard and talked with clients out in that Western area that they've just dissed the crop up, uh, zeroed it out for insurance and have planted something else, Milo, for example, to take its place. So um, the tour numbers, you know, pretty much as far as yield goes, comparable to the USDA, but much higher abandonment rates. And that's gonna be hard, I think, to really determine how accurate that is until we actually get in the fields in the next month or so and uh, and reveal those, those actual numbers. But uh, as far as the yield goes, yeah, this is a, a very small yielding crop. Um, certainly production is going to be very dismal and um, this tour numbers are, are, are gonna be closely watched and compared to what the USDA says in the future as far as abandonment rates and overall production numbers. So we had a bit of a bounce in the grain trade overnight in Globex. Now, do you look at that as a turnaround or do you look at that as maybe a little profit taking before the weekend? Well, certainly it's going to be some short covering going into the weekend because we've had such a down week this week in the grains, corn, soybeans, wheat, everything has, has really free fallen. The key, I think, is going to be what happens after this 8.30 open. Is that small rally we've seen in the overnight, is it sold off? Do we see any type of additional recovery? Can we take out the overnight highs and find more uh, buy stops and lift us to higher prices? Because what's happened the uh, most of this week is we've seen markets trade lower overnight. Those lows get exceeded during the day session, sell stops push the market even further to bigger losses by the closing bell. So can the opposite happen this morning or do we sell this opening uh, bell at 830, push the markets back lower uh, and, and really don't see much in the way of a bounce, even though the overnights are higher. So the dollar is lower this morning and that helps a lot of these commodities. We're seeing, you know, metals and, and crude oil, all these markets kind of benefiting from a lower dollar this morning and the grains are in that camp right now. Okay, we'll come back in just a moment. We'll take a look at our livestock trade as we head toward the weekend. Our guest is Brian Hoops. We'll be right back. Well, we're talking with Brian Hoops right now. He's with Midwest Market Solutions. And now let's talk about the setup here that we have going on, Brian. 
Uh, let's talk about livestock trade as we get toward the end of our trading week. I want to take a look at our live cattle board here and how we finished yesterday. So uh, we were higher across the board. June was up 70 cents at 165.52. So that was a pretty strong finish yesterday. Mm -hmm. But feeders, wow, did they steal the show. August up 335 at 234.50. I believe that's new uh, contract highs again. And lean hogs, well, they sold them off early, but they did come back a little bit on the nearbys. June was 42 higher at 85.30, but the deferreds were weaker. August down 95 cents. So what's going on here? Uh, what do you see happening today to finish the week in the livestock? Uh, you're absolutely right. Feeder cattle, most of the contracts hit new contract highs yesterday. So, you know, it's a very strong market. They may give a little bit back of that today with the corn trying to bounce, but uh, they may, uh, I think, just really take their cue from what happens uh, as the corn market develops during the day. But certainly contract highs are, are not bearish by any stretch of the imagination. Um, the cattle market, had, we saw steady from maybe a little bit better cash cattle trade. The, sh the uh, killed numbers for this week are going to come in very similar to last week, right around 640,000 heads. So we'd love to see 650 or 660,000 head. It's probably not going to happen this week, but the futures have moved higher and probably going to continue to move higher. They do have some resistance, 30, 40 cents above the market and I, I think they probably go test that overhead resistance at some point during the session today and uh, a lot of that strength is, is coming from anticipating what the cash is going to do next week and with the boxes moving higher last night that's another area of support for the cattle market all right well thank you brian for helping to explain everything that's impacting the markets here overnight yeah. Appreciate that. We'll get everything uh, off and trading here at the bottom of the hour. That's Brian Hoops of uh, Midwest Market Solutions in Springfield, Missouri. So, Tammy, anything could happen. It's about the end of the week here. So.